Okie dokie, here we go. So a guide on how to use open orienteering's mapper software. So first thing first, we're going to open up our base map and this is going to give us uh, what we use to build from. So I'm Stuart from Blair Vadic Outdoor Centre and we work for Glasgow City Council Education Department and I'm just going to show you how we build a primary school map or a secondary school map or any map you wish. We have our main key on the side. So this is a uh, different land sort of filling in tools we can use. The yellows are open area. Then we have some different things. You can select everything on the right hand side and symbols. And then we have our playground symbol and using the different tools along the top bar allows us to create circles, squares or random shapes. Notice things layer up on top of each other. So in this instance, the car park was on top of the water. Next, we have our line features. So these features are things like fences and walls and what have you. And you can create them in the same way. So selecting the little wiggly tool up the top, I can create a small rectangular type shape. I can change which orientation the fence lines are by clicking on the orientation line up on the top next to the little circle. And then what I can also do is join stuff. So all I do to join something is put the two points on top of each other and then click the little segmented circle up the top. This will allow things to join. That allows me to move a corner and keep it as one whole shape. To move something, all you do is grab the little pointer, so the blue square, and you can drag it to wherever you need it to be. If you need to add an extra shape, you can just push control, hold control, and then click on where you want the extra point. To make a cut, all you do is use the cutting icon when you've got the thing selected, and then add two points. This allows you to cut out a section, move a section, or whatever. This is handy for when we're creating like gates or things like that in a fence. The last thing we can add is like single features. So things like a flagpole or perhaps a tree. I've made some different sizes of trees as well. So you can get different sizes uh, on your map. And also we can change the orientation of certain items like the picnic benches there. Right, so the things you've got to play with. Now we need to bring in a template. So we can click up the top and open the template menu and then the little plus button in the bottom right hand corner. We can add a JPEG or, or whatever file you have. We can also toggle things on and off. So if you want to see more of the map or less of the map, you can toggle by clicking on the two things. I'm going to import a JPEG and it's going to be a full scale map of a school. By changing the number in this box, the pixels per meter, you can change the size of your imported image. The rectangle on the screen is A4 paper. As we can see, my scale is slightly out. So I'm zooming in here and you can see my 20 meters does not line up with the 20 meters on the map. So what I need to do is change the ratio here. So I'm clicking on the positioning uh, icon down in the bottom right hand corner and I'm just going to change the numbers so I've changed 0.4 to 0.3 and notice everything is now lining up. At this point I should change the numbers to 10 and 20 rather than 20 and 40. Okay here is our main building so I'm going to select the building tool on the right hand side and the rectangle shape or the square shape in the top line. Then I can collect all the corners and just drag, click, drag, click and that creates our lovely building shape. As you can see I toggle the base map off and on and you can see our building is perfectly aligned. The next thing I like to do, so either with the vegetation line on the right hand side or the distinct changing ground, the dotted line, is put the outside fence on. That sort of gives me a barrier to then paint all my colours on top. So what I can do is just drag and click this line all the way around the outside of the map. I'll fast forward me doing this so you don't have to watch me click every single point. And when you get back to the first point, this is where you're going to join the two lines. So finish your uh, line on top of where your first point was, select that, and then use the segmented little circle tool up the top to join these points together. That has created a full line round the outside. And like I said, it will make it easier to paint inside. 
Next, what I'm going to do is just add some extra features using the change of ground icon. So this is the dotted uh, line symbol. And what I can do is just outline these hedges you can see in the middle of the screen. So I just follow those around. And same with the curbs and things like that. So I'm on to curbs now. I then realize I'm doing a car park and there's not much need for detail in the car park. So I'm going to undo that. To undo something, you can just push the undo button at the top. And that allows me to then create the curb where I think the curb should be. So now I'm just following the outside lines of these car parks just to give me a, a definition, a boundary. And I remember to click on the outside fence line, so a green line each time when I finish. What this will do is make sure that I have a full boundary. Again, when I paint later, it means it's going to be a fully enclosed shape. You'll find I'm constantly zooming in and zooming out depending how much detail or how specific I want to get each section. So you notice the plus and minus magnifying glasses at the top, they are perfect for this. The one to the right of that uh, expands to the full size of your map. There's also a pan tool, so the sort of um, four compass points, you can drag that and you can move around your map. So I'll just skip through here, but this is me just adding any linear features. So anything that is going to be a line, so like the hedge there or any curbs or anything like that, I'm just going to keep clicking, clicking, clicking and adding them all in, including this little bark section. So a little bark section here, I'm just making into a rectangle. As I came up to this corner, I noticed I'd made a slight error. That outside green line is actually too far out. So what I'm going to do is click on the point and drag it in and then remove the extra points. So removing the extra points, just hold the control button and click on the little uh, little blue square and it will remove a point. If I want to add an extra point again, holding control, I can just click anywhere on the line and it will create a new point, a new intersection point and I carry on making my line features. As I come to this part of the playground, I notice there's a couple of little buildings, so a square building and a circle button. I messed up a bit, put an extra little point in there, so again, hold control, click it. And then I mess up again, and I've made a triangle instead of square, so add an extra point, hold and control, and then drag it to where I want it. Make a little circle with the circle tool, starting on the outside of the circle and drag into the opposite of the diameter. At this point, I have a bike shelter. So what I'm going to do is use the canopy symbol on the right hand side. So the greyish one with the black line. And I'm going to create a rectangle and pop that in there. I'm going to ignore the playground symbols just now. I'm going to come back to them later when I've coloured in. So I'm just trying to do linear features, but not the actual playground markings at the moment. Another canopy over here. There's another wee changing ground here. So this is a flower bed. So I'm just following around the outline of that. And this is going to be a different color later. So finishing on my outside fence line. There's another one down here. So I'll just create a shape for it as well. And there we have it. I think I've added all my line features so I can toggle off the templates so I can see what I've actually produced there. You'll need to do this a few more times as you get used to the system. Now comes the fun bit. So what we're going to do is select our um, open land symbol. So that's the bottom layer of our map and the little paint symbol, which is up next to the letter A on the second top line. And all you do is go around and paint the grass yellow or interior colors so we're keeping it traditional so anything that should be grass i use the yellow icon and paint it next thing we're going to add is we're going to add in our flower beds so that will sit on top so we've got two flower beds here 
a little trick here is select the dotted lines, then go across to the flower bed symbol, right click and say change to. So you can change it to that symbol instead of having to redraw something. And that will just sit on top of the grass perfectly there. At this point, I also noticed some little minor adjustments I want to make. So adding some extra lines, taking some extra lines away. So again, using the control button and clicking on different places on the map, either to add or remove, and then just dragging and dropping to where they should be. My next layer is going to be my hedges. So anywhere that is a hedge, I'm going to get the right uh, right icon. So this could be woods or hedges, uh, choosing how dark you want them to be. So I've chosen the darkest green because it's an impenetrable hedge. You're not going to be able to run through this. And I've added them all in. Uh, I've got some wood chippings here underneath these trees. So I just pop them in at the same time. As I pop this next hedge in, I notice I've got a mega rectangle and I'm going to work out how to put a gate into it. So essentially what I'm going to do is a lot of cutting and cropping of the two lines that created the boundary and create two smaller rectangles with a gap in the middle. I could have used the undo button. Instead, I'd cut two lines across the green hedge and that allowed me to remove that section. I do the same with the extra lines here. So I'm going to select a line. I'm going to add two cut points, take them out. Same on the other line. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an extra point and that allows me to then use the join tool. So a little practice in joining shapes around the hedge there. And then repeat on the other one. And now for the nervy part, I'm going to add the concrete in. Well, as you do this, just check that you don't overlay any of your um, grass or hedges and things. So the concrete is going to sit on top of everything apart from the buildings. So check that you've not covered something by accident. And again, toggling on your map and off your map, the template, you can then see if you have done that. I spot some little white sections just where my boundaries were. So I'm just going to go in and change where they are. So grabbing the points and moving it across again, try not to go across the grass because the brown sits on top of the yellow. So what I do is I just move the points around inside the brown area. And by toggling on and off the template, we can see we're actually getting a really nice map very quickly. Okay, now for the playground marking. So using the white line tool, so this is why I didn't do it earlier because I wanted to be able to see it. I've just added the rectangle for the sports area there. I'm adding a single line across the top and then I can put in some circles. I'm going to put in a big circle and what I'm going to do is to mirror image that, I'm going to put two cut points on it. So select the object and then using the cut tool, cut two specific points where you want it. Then that allows me to do is I can then drag it and move it to the opposite side, but have an exact image the same size. There was a couple of little sneaky points that weren't quite perfect, so I'm just going to sort them. So just move them so they're crossing the outside perimeter of the sports pitch. I've decided not to add the extra markings like the key for the basketball court because it comes a bit crowded. Um, what you can also do at this point, if you were there in real life, so if it's your school, you'll know if there's a basketball net there or not. So you could add the hoop symbol, but I don't know because I'm just using a plan view. So I don't know if there is. I presume there is. But I'm not sure. Now onto our little road marking symbol. So I've got a specific tool here and what I'm going to do is create a little square and then add some extra points. These extra points are quite specific because what I'm going to do is chamfer the edges. So curve the edges round to mirror image what is going on the ground. So to do this, I'm going to add eight extra points around the outside and then remove the corner points. So you'll have the gist by now. You just hold the control button and that allows you to either add a little point onto the square or remove one as well. 
We're going to use a new tool now. So up on the top left, we have a select tool and then a select tool with the line above it. What that does is allows us to curve a line. So all I do this time is hold control. And then as the corner illuminates, I click it and that makes it a curvy shape. And what I'll do here is just add all the extra squares and rectangles of playground markings in a super quick fashion for you. When I got to this bit, I realized there was lots of rectangles. So instead of drawing each individual rectangle and getting them slightly different angles, I'm actually going to use control copy. So control and then C on my keyboard, I can copy a shape and then I can just adjust the shape, but it will keep the lines parallel to each other by using the original image. So control C and then control V pops down a new rectangle. You can then just adjust it to size if you don't want the if you want to keep parallel use the select tool with the little line above it and that allows you just to move the line in parallel rather than moving a whole corner point While working on that section, I realized that the building actually has three sections of canopy on it. So bits that you could run under that I didn't notice when I first put the building in. So what I'm going to do is select the building and make a copy of it. And that way I can get the exact shape on top. So ignore what I just did there by clicking a shape. I'm going to add a complete copy on top, drag it into the same position and change it to canopy. So change the symbol to canopy there. Then selecting the building area, now I can add my different points. So by holding control, adding some extra points and then dragging the specific corner back to the point inside the line. And that creates my canopy sections. So another we play about with my template, switching it on and off just so I can see if I've missed anything of the playground details. And if I'm happy, then I can move on to the specific features. So we're going to do some spot features. So things like our trees and gates and what have you like that. Before I do this, I'm going to change my fence. So remember, we put a dotted green line down to start with. So I'm going to right click or select the dotted green line of the fence and then right click over the fence symbol and switch to this icon that's put in my fence check the orientation of the little sticky out bits i put them to the outside of the map so it doesn't interfere with anything on the inside now using my cut tool and my gates i'm going to pop some gates on so orientated the gate there to a line and then what i'm going to do is select the fence again and cut it so cut twice and then remove the middle section of fence and that's what it looks like I noticed this section of bins here, so I've got a dotted line, but I know that's going to be a high wall. So again, I'm just going to select that, make it into a high wall and then add the gate on as well. I've got some different size gates there as well. You can use the edit feature on any of the tools and you can edit any of these symbols as well. So if you've not got the specific sized object, you'll see that when we come onto trees, you can just edit them and that way you get the perfect size for your map. So at this point, I've no stairs, so I'm deciding which staircase to put in. I've got this wider staircase, but it's got the steps quite far apart. So I decide that I'm not too happy with that as my staircase. So what I'm going to do is switch that out, delete that, and then change it to the narrower staircase and put two with a dividing fence in the middle. I think that looks more appropriate. And then I'm going to start looking at gates again. So working my way around the outside of the map, adding in any gates, as well as occasionally checking the inside for any internal gates.
And just as I'm doing that, I notice I should have another high wall here. So I select the little rectangle we put on before and switch that to a high wall symbol and then add the gates. At this point, I find my electrical substation. So I'm going to, inst instead of having that as white, I'm going to colour it in with an out of bounds symbol. So sort of ver vertical black lines parallel to each other and keep that as an out of bounds area. You might have other areas on your map that are out of bounds, but again, we don't know that when we're mapping from above. And there we have it. I think I've got most of the linear features sorted and the external fences uh, and gates. Now we have flagpoles, trees, individual bushes, uh, bike stands, anything like that that you want to add into your map. So different sized trees here. I notice I've got a white circle at this point. So what I'm going to do is actually edit that white circle out. So I click, right click on the tree symbol and then I'm going to go to edit. And what this will allow me to do is then change the change the priorities of it. So instead of having a central diameter that is white, it's going to have no color. So just on that drop down menu there, I'm going to change it to instead of white over green, I'm going to change to none. And that will essentially make it see through. And I'm a lot happier with that. Again, I have to do that with another couple of symbols later on, but I will just go and add tons of trees into this school map. This is a wee tricky thing here. So this is up to you. So, um, Picnic benches, bins, I don't know if they're permanent or not. So again, from the plan view, you don't know if they're a permanent feature. If these picnic benches are liable to move about the playground, then I'm not going to add them to my map. If they are probably fixed, so if they're bolted to the ground or don't move regularly, I think I should add them. Also spotted a small building there, so the recycling bins I've just put in as a small building. So we missed a linear feature earlier on. So we've got some contours, so some little hills here. So what I use is the brown contour line. And again, I'm just going to trace around the outside of that egg shape. I'll then do the internal one. And just to keep them the same, so they look the same. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste them on top of each other, then rotate them and also change the size of one. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. So to rotate an object, what I do is click on the outline. So click on the object and then the little rotate button along that top line. Then I can turn it to the correct angle I wish it and then slightly move it and check that it lines up. And it does do the same with a smaller one. So to use the, the scale tool, I select my object. I'm just going to turn it and orientate it about in the right position. And then using the scale tool along the top bar, so the sort of cross looking one. Click on that and then I just drag my cursor in or out depending whether I want to make it bigger or smaller and then you can realign it. Again, when you come across little problems, so I've found another area of hedge that we missed when we were first outlining. It's not a big issue. You just have to redo it. So I go around and I put in the external line, so the change of uh, change of ground line. Uh, then I'm going to remove the open land that I painted earlier. I'm going to color in my two hedges and then add the yellow back in. So add the open land back in. Easy peasy. Couple of extra symbols getting thrown in here. So we've got a tree, a medium sized tree. Uh, we also have a signpost and a bench. So we're popping in the bench and just changing its orientation. So click and then hold hold your mouse click as you do this and you can train change which way it is or you can just use the rotate tool afterwards we've got a signpost the memorial stone in here so i pop in a signpost symbol too 
And if you've not guessed by now, my favourite thing to do is toggle on and off the template to see if I've missed any details. And I had missed a little bit. This open plaza here is open to the pavement, so I'm just going to remove the fence that uh, is there. So I'm just going to put cut, two cut lines on the fence and then take that out. So I'd missed a couple of contour lines here, so what I'm going to do is use the contour symbol and I'm just going to draw those lines in, so four different hills that are in the corner of this playground. Again, I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch it, I think you know what you're doing by now. And I had missed one more little thing, some sneaky little bike racks. So I've got my bike rack tool. And again, if your bike racks are different sizes, you can just edit this tool and pop them in. I'm copying and pasting again so that I keep everything relatively parallel. My last little toggle on and off, so checking I'm happy, and I am. So now what I'm going to change is the opacity, and I'm going to change this to 100, so now my map will pop. I can switch off the template as well, because I no longer need this. I am happy. So now what I'm doing is I'm just going to throw everything from the outside of the map back inside the frame. So I've got my key just finding appropriate places to put them. With my logos, this is actually a separate template, so I have to click on it in the template and then use the drag symbol, which is down in the bottom right there, to move my logos around. The logos won't come with your map, you'll be able to add your own, so it's just a JPEG uh, of that. Last thing, I'll move the Out of Bounds back into a nice wee position up the top, and that's it, pretty much done. The last thing I add is some north lines. So again, this is just an orienteering feature so that you don't have to if you're just using it for outdoor learning, but we're just going to add in some north lines. So just dragging, it's an area symbol and it sits on top of everything else on the map. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to align it with my grid. So I'm just going to change some of the settings. So edit some of the settings. So the grid, which is set up to the scale, is also set up exactly to my north lines as well. Just playing about with the different settings uh, allows you to do that. Can't remind you enough about saving throughout your work, that's an obvious thing, but now we're going to export it and we're going to export it either as an image or as a PDF, so that's up to you guys. In the drop down menus you can change it to A4 and as you can see it should fit perfectly, either landscape or portrait. I can then toggle on or off the grid if I want the grid on or off and then save it as a, I save it as a JPEG, you can save it as whatever you want, that is entirely up to you. And to finish as well, I just feel uh, we sometimes use grids, so I've taken off the north lines, or I'm going to take off the north lines, you'll see that in a second, and then I'm going to show the grid this time when I try and print my map. If you print with the grid and the north lines, it just becomes a little bit blurry because of thicker line lines. And there you go, in under half an hour we have made a map, uh, zoomed up a little bit, but under an hour we've made a map and that's how we do it. Any questions feel free to get in touch and I'll try and answer them if I can. Um, to be honest, it's just about playing about with the software until you get used to it. Enjoy! So I've been Stuart from Blurvadic and that is how to use Open Orienteering's mapper software. Good luck!